Hey people, welcome back. I'm the Broken Papa and welcome back to my tutorials. Got a really fun one today. We're going to be like a really cool kind of butterfly girl. If it's your first time to my channel, make sure you subscribe, click like. And this video is sponsored by Tattoo Space. I'm a sponsor of theirs. I also do a few brush sets with them. Um, really cool. But, but this video is going to be a butterfly girl. I'm going to be using pencils, rubbers, and we use my brush markers as well. Make sure it's the ones that are new and brush markers. You can use Copics other stuff, but just make sure it is a brush marker or use pencils or something else. Um, basically, the pro markers won't have the same kind of tip. It just won't blend easy. Um, yeah, these ones are the ones that are brush markers. I'm using the gray scales. Um, these ones are like the warm tones. So you can see the codes on there. It's going to be like WG1 to WG5. It's basically like a light to gray. And the XB is basically just a black marker. It's just pure black. I've got a rubber and a pencil. The pencil is just going to be a 3B1. Nothing special. And the paper I'm using is going to be a Bristol board. Bristol board is really good for using markers on. Um, it sort of hands the handles a bleed a lot better than like normal paper does. But for now, people, here we go. I'm going to start off by sketching this square shape. And I'm going to do like a little cross just down the middle of it, just divide it into four spits. It's going to be like four kind of square, square shapes. Don't worry if it's not 100% accurate, just kind of sketch it in there. You know, it's all kind of sketchy at this stage. You know, don't worry about detail. We're just kind of plotting roughly where stuff goes. Now, the second step, we're going to get a little line coming from that center point, just coming out like so. Um, now, one of the bottom there is going to come a little bit past the box, and you're going to do a little line here about halfway through that bottom corner box. So you've got a little sort of, you know, V shape on the side, and a little line coming halfway through it. The line's going to connect to the tip of that line, and it's going to curve back into that one. This is going to basically make the nose, it's going to make it sit really nicely. So the idea is the nose wants to start outside the box, come in the box, and curve up around the forehead. The way it sort of does there. And next I'm going to have a little line here. I'm going to mark out a little bit of the nose. So if you get a little line to come down the end of the nose, about halfway through this bit, create a little curve curving up to the upper line, and a little curve line just coming down here, creating this kind of curve shape. And this is going to give you the positioning for the eye. It's a really nice, way, easy way of getting the eye exactly where you want it to be. You know, a lot of people go too high or too low. This gets exactly in the right spot. I'm going to do a little eyebrow just above it. So I'm going to follow that line we done initially and just widen it up towards the tip, just by the front part of the eye, and get thinner towards the end. Now, the nostril is going to fit just off that curve, the, the, the uh, curve we've done from the eye. You basically want to touch the edge of that, and that's going to create the little curve of the nostril, just a really simple little curve. Now, the mouth is going to be a bit like a sort of teardrop shape, you know, so it's going to go to a point one side and curve around. Uh, you want to sort of twist it a little bit inside the mouth and the bottom lip is just a nice little curve. You want to make sure that curve's a little bit wider than the top one and a bit shorter. The chin just going to curve off the bottom part like that to the bottom line. And you're going to sort of, you know, flick it backwards. Don't worry about bringing it the whole way because the line's going to be basically going to end there when we sort of put the detail in. Now coming back from the eye, kind of flicking outside the box, you're going to create this butterfly wing. Now you wouldn't just come quite uh, come back quite far because the idea is this butterfly wing is going to be coming out of the back of the head. So it's going to go past the hairline. So you're going to get the basic one there, then get a circle and the little loops come off of the bottom part of the butterfly leaf. And just here, we're going to mark in some uh, rough bits for the hair. So you're going to create this little line that's going to go into a little bit of a spiral. And it's going to give a base for the wing to kind of curve off of. So you want to make sure that little spiral covers up above the wing, you know, for the butterfly. So basically, the butterfly wing is going to sit behind it. A little line above the top part, make sure that the hair goes above the initial head shape. You know, because if it's below it, it basically kind of feels like it's too small. You want to make sure the hair is going above what the head size would be. You're going to get a few little curves just around here, just around the cheek area to create, you know, bits. And if you bring a line coming back from the nose, just there, just follow the nose line and it basically put your neck in the right spot. Yeah, basically, the head's going to be tilted back a little bit, so you're going to get a really nice neck, you know, angle with that. So just follow the nose through, pass the lip, outside it. Now I'm going to come on with the marker so you can see everything a lot clearer. So I'm just going to mark in the initial part of the eye, just in the exact sort of lines we've done initially. And you get a little line, just cut through the middle there and just flick off the edge just to create a little eyelash. Now here you can see it curves outwards, it comes in, it curves around. You're making the line a bit more simple now, you're not making it so pointy. Um, the sort of pointiness was basically to get the positioning. Just make everything have a nice kind of curve to it. So just go all the lines we've just done, get nice simple curves. You know, don't go too complicated, don't try to make any sort of jaggedness, you know, you basically want to get everything nice and smooth. And yeah, if you follow the instructions and you get it right, you get a really nice face. Don't worry if you don't get this first time, it does take a bit of practice, but once you master this positioning, um, it just makes drawing faces so much easier. If you do struggle with faces, go over to tattoospace.com. Uh, uh, tattoo I've got a really cool brush set on there. It's called, uh, uh, sorry, what's it called again? <laughs> sorry, uh, Lady Head Creator, that's the one. Sorry, I was getting a name. It's a new one that was like changing name and stuff. Yeah, it's called Lady Head Creator. And you can basically create an old school head like this. Um, it's got a whole different kind of hairstyles, eyes, noses, faces. And you can make about 300,000 combinations. There's over 100 brushes on there. So if you struggle, it's a really good set to have. But anyway, people, back to the uh, drawing at hand. 
So you've got, I've got to have those initial hairlines we've done. So you've got a little spar bit, you know, I told you about to give the butterfly wing a really good position off. And this part of the hair here, so I'm basically looping this line, just mimicking this line, looping around to create the sections of the hair. Because you've got to remember, hair you want to do in sections. You don't want to do like strands. Forget strands. Strands is not how you do hair. You're not drawing each individual hair. You want to break into sections, especially old school. Like, see here, I'm going to make this kind of loop around. The bottom bit, I'm not going to quite finish it because I basically want it to go behind this bottom part of the wing. So you see that bottom part of the wing just sits just in front of that last bottom part of the hair. I've got this nice kind of loop that's come around the part of the neck. It's just a really, it creates a really nice finish to the neck. So you basically want to create one loop, loop onto it, and underneath it, just keep curving off and coming around. And you basically get like a little twist motion into the hair. It's a really nice way to kind of get a bit of a twist into it. Now the upper parts of the hair here, I'm basically just kind of mimicking the upper line and just going around with it. I'm going to do the same on the back here in the spiral. I'm going to basically bring this line and spiral all the way around, keeping about the same distance apart until we get to the end. And each time I do it until I basically run out of space, and when I run out of space, I'll just tuck it underneath that loop. So the idea is that loop will sit in front. Now the back bit here, you see I'm just mimicking the lines, so it's just carrying those lines through again and again until you get a nice repeating pattern. Same thing with the bottom here, I'm just going to repeat this line coming around, and just as it comes to the edge, just kind of looping it off. Now it takes a little bit of practice, but once you get done, it's really nice and simple, and like you realize hair is not as complicated as what you think it is. It's just one of those things, it just takes a bit of practice to get used to. Now I'm at the back of the butterfly wing here, I'm just separating the different sections. So I've got, I think it's about five little sections, just flicking lines in. And on the top part here, I'm just got a few curves, just kind of give something to kind of build the base off of. I'm creating two little circle parts just here. Two little like semicircles connecting, just to give a base. You basically want to create this in the sections now. You're basically just working out how to divide it into parts. And I'm going to create some little loops just around the outside, a really classic old school pattern. You basically loops and little lines just on the inside. It's dead simple, but it's so effective. You can add, add it to any old school design and it works. So you've got this little loop bits. I've got a little twist just here, classic old tools twist, little circle. And you're going to see here, so I'm going to loop around. It's just a repeating loop pattern. So once I want to move my hand out of the way, you'll see. Sorry, I'm a lefty, so I kind of draw the, the older lefty claw. So sometimes my hand does get in the way. I do try not to do it, but it's a bit hard sometimes. So bring back those lines just like so. I always like to have the end parts have those kind of long lines, so kind of bit kind of length to it. And yeah, a little secondary line just there. I'm gonna create a little sort of semicircle part just on the second part, a little kind of secondary line just there, and a little circle underneath. Again, you're just creating sections, you're just making each little part interesting. Um, I don't like it to make it exactly the same as the top part, but I like it to have a bit of similarity. So there, I have the sort of the section there, and then I have the longer kind of loops, where it's almost the same but not quite the same. And now at this stage, I'm just gonna rub everything out. And just, uh, yeah, while I'm rubbing and rubbing and rubbing away, just be prepared. I'm going to have a little self-promotion just coming here. I'm going to be showing you my, one of my sets. Um, this one's going to be the Heads and Half 2 set with Tattoo Space. Um, it's got 30 different animal heads. It's got 30 different tutorials for them. Um, each one's a 12 stage tutorial. You're going to see it nice and clearly. Um, I also had the Lady Head Generator, like I told you about. The, uh, sorry, Lady Head Creator. Um, but yeah, if you had that tattoospace.com, you'll see it. But for now, people here, you're about to see it. So yeah, this is the kind of set you get. You basically get all these kind of brushes on Procreate, which is a, an app on your iPad. And you get these 12 stage tutorials. It shows you exactly how to do so. If you like my tutorials, it's just another tool you guys can have. So yeah, head over to there. It's really cool. Now let's get a little, some little fine line details here. I've got a Unipin fine liner. This one's a one in um, thickness. Uh, the one can be a bit hard to get out sometimes. For some reason, I don't always sell it in the shops, but you can get it on like Amazon and stuff. Um, a 0 0.8 would do fine as well. That's a really common one you can get hold of. Um, I'm not too sure that it is. It's basically just how wide the tip is. Um, the thicker the tip, the thicker the line. Uh, for old school ones like this, I like it to be quite thick, you know, but this is basically just a bit thinner than what the Sharpie is. So now we've got all the line work done, I'm going to come in here and start getting the shades. So I'm going to be using the Windsor Nerd brush markers, like I said. You guys can use whatever you want. You can use pencils, paints, anything you want. Um, these are the brush markers. So I'm going to use the black and I'm going to use the grey shades. So what I'm going to do is use the side to side motion. I'm going to use the black and I'm going to come down with the grey. Using the darkest grey first. And just keep going line over line over line with just all smaller ones. So it's going to be basically go black, then it'd be like WD5, which is really dark, then the four, three, two, one. And basically in a side to side motion, to make it a really nice even blend. If you kind of flick out the other way, like if you try flicking it into the space, you're not you're going to get like a dirty finish and it's not going to be very nice. For marker pens, it's exactly like you do watercolor. Side to side motion is the key. You know, you'll get a really nice even line that way. But yeah, make sure you use plenty of black. Like see here, I basically I get a section, I basically do a massive big black section first. And then once you've got my little highlight, I then add the bit in, in between it. You know, don't worry about losing detail, those lines you drew. Don't worry about losing those with the black. You know, black is really key to getting the detail right and making it feel like an old school piece. You know, if you're on that traditional kind of vibe, you need to have all this black. You know, it just doesn't feel the same without it. 
So yeah, you can see, putting the black section, just come with the gray shade, side to side. You know, just go over a few times and you'll notice it makes it bleed a little bit. Um, just try not to do it too much because it will carry on bleeding a little bit after you initially finish using the markers. So if you carry on using it, chances are it might bleed a little bit too much. So just give it about two, three passes, see how it looks, you know, quickly. And then give it another sort of like three, you know, two or three passes if you need to. But the idea is to sort of, you know, keep your scales, you know, very similar. So you basically want to go down one gray at a time and it just really helps to blend. And you see here, I'm basically sticking with the shape. So when you have these kind of curves, I'm kind of like curving with it rather than just creating a random sort of like, you know, highlight. I want the highlight to kind of go that way so you kind of feel that kind of curve, you know, texture to it. So it's really important to kind of think about the direction you want it to go. And don't worry, don't be afraid to kind of put a bit of gray over the top like I've done there. You know, but sometimes with this hair, it's nice to have a pure kind of sort of gray area. And that's so, I mean, you can leave a little white highlight through the strip it, you know, through the middle if you want. But you don't necessarily need that. You know, I sometimes have that, sometimes don't. And um, for this one, I'm just preferring to go whole gray over it. You know, I want it to kind of appear very dark, so it's going to make that wing whip, uh, pop even more. Now, I'm doing pretty much the same effect around the eye here. So I'm just doing a really thin little black just around the top and around the bottom and doing a very, very, very quick little fade out. I don't want to drag out too much. I just want like a little hint of dark makeup around the eye. So you want to go very, very short. You don't want to drag that shade out too much at all. You know, you might even want to skip, you know, one of the shades. So you just go like, you know, black to WD5 to WT1 or something. You know, don't sort of like worry about dragging out too much. I'm going to add some more black in the wing here. So I've got like a nice bit of black just kind of fading off towards that end. You know, I tend to fade this way on the wings rather than the other way. You know, you can go the other way as well, but I always seem to go this way. I don't know why, I just prefer it. You know, so you're sort of fading off towards the end rather than from the end, if that makes sense. And having little areas like this where it's pure black as well is really nice. So you see these top parts and that bottom part there, you know, I've marked my little dots so you can see which ones I'm doing and just blacking them in. You know, don't be afraid to have areas that are literally just pure black and nothing else. You know, they're really cool and they really make it stand out. A little bit back just to bottom of that tip, just kind of fade upwards. You know, don't worry too much about the blend here because we are going to be hitting this with color as well. So a lot of color is going to come out afterwards. So we're now coming with the color. So you can see I've got the, uh, the red here initially. Um, this red is the berry red. And you see I've got a blender mark here. And what you do is just touch the tip of the blender and just keep going around the edge. And then you'll get a nice little blend out for it. And now once you've got that done, you just got to, you know, put the, bread, uh, the other red just over to the side, just here. Um, I think most of the areas I'm going to probably go solid red with, with I think. So I'm going to colour in this bit nice and solid red. And then the bottom part of it is going to colour in solid red as well. Same with the bottom. So I'm kind of letting the black shade kind of do the magic there for me. So now you've got the initial red in there. I'm going to come in with the other colours now. So I'm going to get a bit of flesh tone here. So I've got like my fire brick going into what I think it's like cinnamon or sandstone or something. It's like a new kind of blush kind of tone. So basically you've got, you've got like three granite gradients. So you've got like a dark kind of brown, a kind of caramel into like a flesh tone. And I'm going to whip it all in there to begin with. And then afterwards I'm going to come in with like a bit of a lighter one and just kind of blend, blend everything nice and evenly. You want a dark little bit just down by the nose, just kind of give it a direction nose. So basically from the top, just kind of flicking out towards the nostril. Don't worry about going the entire way. You just want to get a little flick just going down towards that and it kind of give that little illusion of the shadow on the nose. A little bit of shadow just underneath the nose, just like a little triangle just underneath it, nothing too crazy. And then a little bit of shadow just on the corner of the mouth and a little bit just underneath the lip. And then just obviously the bottom of the chin, just kind of bring it out and a little bit underneath the neck. And again, just going to bring the colors and just kind of slowly side to side, using that side to side motion, just keep fading it out. Now that's what we want, just that nice even kind of blend. And then just keep bringing over all of them and eventually you kind of have everything kind of where you want it to be. A little bit like, you know, highlight just there on the, uh, 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 on the upper eyelid. Eyelid? Eyelid. <laughs> Sorry, I get a bit tongue-tied now for some reason. So yeah, just coming with like a really sort of like, you know, basic kind of flesh tone now. This one's like really kind of weak, very kind of watery. So it just helps blend everything else nice and evenly. And then I quite like the kind of water paint kind of effect on it. So I'm not going to go sort of too kind of smooth with the skin texture. I like it to kind of have that really old fashioned kind of vibe. So here I'm going to use a little bit of fire brick. Um, it's basically like a brown tone. And I'm going to put on these little corner bits and I'm going to use the amber tone, which is like a nice golden yellow. And I'm going to blend that out to create this nice kind of sort of yellow effect. Um, it's a really kind of cool, classic, old school way of doing it. You know, this kind of sort of like brown into the yellow. Um, they're a very, very typical of old school traditional kind of tattoos. You know, it's, it's very rare to see a traditional tattoo that hasn't got this kind of coloring. And yeah, just using the bold in the circles, um, little kind of details around. And then I think after this, I'm going to use a bit of turquoise, um, just because it's a nice kind of high contrast color, um, very complementary to what we got already. 
Um, and yeah, I'm not going to use too much that loud. I just want like a little bit just to kind of sort of break up the, the shape of it. Because at the minute, everything is kind of on like the, the kind of yellow to red scale. So I want something to break that up. You know, it's very important. You don't want to have this, you know, everything be the same time. You want one thing now at least that's going to be a bit different, like a blue, purple, or just something that's going to break those kind of tones. And the turquoise does it really good here. So when the turquoise going to take a bit of a sky blue, and it's going to be really cool and it's just going to really break it up. But you can see, almost there now. So it's just like a last kind of little bit of color. And then that's this part of the face done. And like I said, if you like these, you know, head over to my sort of tattoo uh, space set. You know, you've got the tech right, you've got, you got hundreds of these. You, you, can, you can create thousands of these. I think it's about 300,000 combinations. You've got 30 hairstyles, 30 faces, or something like that. It's roughly about 30 eyes, 30 faces, 30 hairs, roughly. Um, but yeah, it's 100 brushes in total with that one. But that's how you do it, people. That's how you draw a really cool, classic, old school kind of butterfly girl. You know, I hope you like it. You know, you can't go wrong with this formula. You know, you can always twist it and other sort of stuff. You know, if it's your first time to page, make sure you click like, please. I uh, really do appreciate it. And yeah, subscribe to my channel. I've got hundreds of videos. But for now, people, I am the Broken Puppet. Thanks for watching. And yeah, I'll see you next time.